Okay, tonight we're going to talk about uh, testing a, a database connection, and and it, this is going to be a, a fairly brief, and I'm just going to hit this one really quick because there's not really much to it. But the problem comes when you're when you're working with distributed uh, servers that are that are distributed all, all all over the place, and you're having connection problems. Sometimes it's hard to tell uh, where the connection problem is, especially when um, when it's the first time you've connected to the server. So what I'm going to do tonight is show you how to diagnose whether or not <clears throat> the problem is coming from the firewall, and that's uh, a very common scenario. You'll be given a, uh, you'll be given access to a server um, on a different you know on a different LAN segment or in a different group, and you won't be able to connect. And you know somebody says it's the firewall, somebody says it's the database, somebody says it's the server. Nobody really knows where the problem is. So at least now you'll be able to say that it definitely is or isn't the firewall. <clears throat> and I'm going to be using Windows Firewall in this instance. Here it is right here. You see I've got a um, an allow action right here. Uh, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. Now this is this is Windows Firewall, but it really doesn't matter. A firewall is a firewall, right? And this won't really tell you which firewall is giving you the problem, but it will tell you that it's it's firewall related. So. Here, let me show you what it looks like first when you can get through. I'm going to go to Command, and we're going to go to Telnet. Now, notice that Enabled is Yes, right? So I do have access configured for SQL Server, Allow the Connections, and if I dug into this, you would see it was on port 1433. So it is enabled. Now, if I come here, I can say uh, Telnet... So you can either give it the, you know, you can give it any authentication you want. You can give it DNS, you can give it um, IP, or you can give it uh, the NetBIOS name like this. It's best to go with either the IP or the NetBIOS name, because uh, if it were DNS, you could still be having DNS issues. And officially, even if you could still be having WINS issues or something if it were, uh, um, if you still can't get in. Uh, using this so officially you should use the IP if you wanna if you wanna nail it down 100 percent okay and then you specify the port so if SQL is on a non-standard port then you would type in that non-standard port so telnet uh, the, the server name and then the port name the port number and you notice how it returned instantly with a blank screen and a cursor at the top okay that means that I got connection to the database okay so if it connects instantly then uh, then uh, that means that uh, the connection was successful, okay? I'll come in here, start this again. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, only I'm going to block the connections. Click Apply. Notice how here it's turned off up here, and the action is block. So now when I do this, uh, you notice how it says connecting, right? So what's going to happen here is it's going to have to time out in order to uh, to decide that it can't connect. So during, while we're waiting for that, and it'll only take a few seconds, um, I think 30 seconds is probably what it takes, um, <clears throat> this will definitively tell you, or almost definitively tell you, there may be a situation, there you go, This may be a situ there may be a situation I can't think of, right? But uh, for the most part, in every situation I've come across, especially in recent history, and I use this at work all the time because we've got a very distributed environment, um, uh, this has never failed to tell me that it was the firewall. Even when I had a firewall guy telling me that he's looking at the rules right now and it's definitely not the firewall, oh, wait, okay, I see the problem, <laughs> and then he configures, and then he changes it, and then the, the connection starts flowing. So if, if, if you get this type of response from Telnet when you're trying to Telnet into SQL, um, assume it's the firewall unless somebody can really prove to you that it's not. Okay? So I'll turn it back on again and allow the connections. You notice how here it's turned back on and enabled is back to yes. And if I run that same command again, boom. You see I get the, the blank screen with the cursor at the top right away. That means I made my connection. So uh, that's how to tell if uh, using Telnet, if you've got a firewall issue between, uh, between one server and another server, um, 
And of course, this works if you this really only works if you verify that the database is up. So if you've got you know another server that talks to that server all the time, then you can TS into that server and test the connection. And if SQL answers, but it, but Telnet doesn't return anything from here, then that's you know that's really really proof that it's a firewall issue. It's definitely not the database. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got this time, and I hope you liked it. Bye.